Well, almost 13 years ago, Calder started just making leads. It was me in my kitchen with a stainless steel dog bowl, making leads, just pouring them by hand. And we've come a long way since then, and the range has grown massively. And what I want to do now is talk you through the different leads in the range. But before I do, I want to talk to you about lead camouflage, because I think ever since the underwater films have come out, there's been this panic from everybody about the camouflage aspect of leads and what you need to put on them. And there are leads coming out with tree bark on them and gravel on them and then yellows and whites and reds and everything else. And the whole world seems to have gone lead camouflage crazy. Now, camouflage only works if what's around the lead blends in with what it's lying on. So you can't chuck a gravel coated lead out onto silt and it suddenly disappear. It just doesn't work like that. And what we've done is we've kept with two colours, but we've actually taken samples of the lake bed, sent those off to the people that make the colours, and then they've sent them back so we know that the brown is as universally a gravelly, muddy colour as possible, and the green works in as many places as possible when you've got a slight covering of weed. And that's why we do it. And if you drop these leads into the edge, you can see how well camouflaged they are. But whatever lead you're using, make no mistake, you can't put something round it, drop it onto any lake bed, and the whole rig suddenly disappear. You have to camouflage everything, and it has to blend in. So first of all, we're going to talk about the latest lead, which is the square pair, a very, very condensed shape. The more condensed any shape, the less distance the fish has to move to feel the full weight. So the square pair in an inline, bearing in mind, the swivel is going to be set up inside the nose of the lead, is going to have hardly any movement before the fish feels the full weight of the lead. On the swivel lead it's slightly more because it's picking the lead up from the thin end first rather than the fat end first, but it's still a very condensed shape and that makes a very, very good bolt rig. The pear lead was one of the first ones in the range and it still remains really popular today. Even anglers like Terry Hearn still use pear leads. Now it started off as a ball lead and what we did was elongated it. Ball leads are great because they're very condensed, but they tangle. So close to the swivel, we've just sloped it in nicely, just tapered it in, so there's a lot less chance of a tangle. The leads come in very small sizes, down to one ounce for people who are just flicking leads into the edge or for specialist anglers, right up to four ounces as well. And they're good for short and medium range. Long range leads, you need to move on to a distance lead, which we're gonna look at now. The distance lead is probably the one I use most in the range because I often find myself fishing a long way out. It's different from most other distance leads because again, it's quite a condensed shape. It's got a bullet nose to it. And the most important thing is two thirds of the weight are condensed into the bottom third of the lead. And that keeps it very, very stable in flight. And you'll notice when you're casting into crosswinds and stuff, this one will keep going straight where other leads will wobble off. Again, available in all the sizes from one and a half right up to five ounces for you nutter casters. And also, it's available in an inline that we call a Skyliner. Exactly the same shape, a hard insert as with all our inline leads, and the size eight swivel fits up inside the nose of the lead as standard. The tournament casting lead is Frank Warwick's favorite design, and it's a very carpy shape, a classic shape. We've taken the shape from the UKSF tournament casting guys that use this shape for their long range casting competitions. And we've changed it from the original zip shape by putting more weight into the nose of the lead so it's more stable in flight. It's got a pointed nose that cuts through the air brilliantly, excellent on lead clips, excellent on helicopter rigs. And if you're going for extreme range, this is the lead for you. The flat pair lead is my favourite lead for fishing up to 100 yards range. It won't cast as far as a distance lead, but it's got a very condensed shape and two flat sides, which give excellent hooking potential. And the flat sides also make it really good for using with a marker float because there's more lead touching the bottom, so you feel more down the line on the marker float. Now it's available in swivel and in line, and it goes right down to one ounce for all you specialist anglers and people that are just chucking amongst feeding fish, right up to five ounces for all you nutters like Ali Hamidi, who likes a great big lump of lead on the line to set the hook. And the inline version is great as a semi-fixed inline or really good on the shocker rig as well. And because it looks more like a stone than any other lead in the range, it's one of the ones that I use on the underwater films as much as possible. Inline leads have come back into fashion recently and I hope it's got something to do with the underwater films because I've been using them on there to very good effect on hard gravel bottoms. The flatliner distance lead works really well on a hard bottom just like all the other inlines in the range but it's a distance shape which means if you cut it down the cross section it's got a very similar shape to one of our distance leads but it's still got four flat sides on it so whatever way it lands it's got to land on a flat side. And I've used this to really good effects with short stiff rigs. And the reason it works so well is it holds the hook link swivel actually off the lake bed so it can pivot around and get into the fish's mouth really easily. So if you combine it with a very short 25 pound IQ hook link 
think a soft hair and a bottom bait, you'll get loads of takes when fishing over boilies. And finally the gripper lead. Now this one came from the old watch leads that people used to use for sea fishing. I was using the watch leads for swinging my baits out over the boat and then rowing back to shore, but every now and again they tangled. So what we've done is just curved them in nicely towards the loop and swivel area. That means if the hook link wraps around it, it'll easily slip off and the rig won't tangle. And it comes in sizes from a one ounce right up to a massive 10 ounce. So you can do anything from fishing for barbel and chub and stuff on a little tiny river, right up to fishing the massive reservoirs and the rivers in Europe, which have got really strong currents. Now, the reason that it holds bottom so well are these pimples on it and also the hole in the middle. And purely by accident, they're also really good in silt because they don't sink in so far because it's in a regular shape. They're also really, really good for using on marker floats because the pimples, again, send loads of tremors down the line. If it's weedy, they do clog up, so only use them on a marker if you're fishing silty lakes that have got a bit of gravel and then a bit of silt. They're excellent for telling the little tiny differences between the two. Now, I keep all different shapes and sizes in my bag all the time because I never know what fishing I'm going to encounter, and that's a mistake a lot of anglers make. They use one lead, one size, one shape everywhere, and they don't adjust it to suit the bottom. And I think if you adjust things around so your rig's absolutely perfect for the spot you're fishing on on that day, you'll get more bites. So now you've got all the information that you need to know about lead designs, there's no reason to get it wrong.